Welcome to Sigma Solver guys. Before I start the video, I want you guys to smash the like button. This helps the YouTube algorithm and keeps me motivated. And if you are new here, then subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss an update. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to look at a new topic which relates to comparison of two graphs and identifying their structural isomorphism using Weisfeller, Lehman, Kernel. So let's read the question first. So we are given two graphs is visible on your screen. Use Weisfeller Lehman kernel for color refinement on these two graph. Can it be used for measuring similarity of these two graphs? So we have to first define what is this algorithm about and how can it be used for color refinement for these two graphs. And later on, using color refinement, can we say that these two graphs are similar or not? So this is the entire question. Let's go through it step by step. So first, we understand what is Weisfeller Lehman kernel. So this is a widely used technique in machine learning for graph structured data. Basically, when data that is going to be fed into the machine learning model is in graphical structure, we tend to use Weisfeller Lehman kernel to simulate that. It comes from an isomorphism test to identify whether two graphs are structurally identical or not. Kind of gives us a sense of that we are comparing two graphs from a structural standpoint. That is, we are not stuck with the node names and the edges directions, getting the wholesome overview and trying to compare whether two graphs are identical or not. A real world application for Weisfeller Lehman kernel is graph classification and graph clustering, both of which are very common because in social networks as well as in any other molecular level networks, we need to identify the clustering characteristics of the network, how the different groups are getting formed, what all attributes to a node can help it belong to a particular communities and so on. It helps to capture the structure and properties of graph efficiently as is just discussed. What we move towards next is the process. So the step one of this entire flow will be to assign the same initial color to all the nodes of the graph. We had been given two graphs in the question. So in that what we did, we took the first graph and assign all of them the green color denoted by the number one. Once that is done, we move to step two, which is to aggregate the colors of the neighbor into a node. So in this case, this is a undirected graph. So the neighbors will be on both sides. They will participate as a neighbor. But when the direction is directed, then the one which has a neighbor, let's say A has a neighbor B, but B does not have a neighbor A, right? So this needs to be kept in mind. So then the aggregation will follow the similar ordering. So aggregate the colors of a neighbor into a node. So the first color was one. So we aggregated this one here this one here and this one here. Why I draw all these three just to make sure that what one are we concerned about because this will help us in the later iterative steps as well. So this is the ones that I am trying to aggregate into this node. Right now we'll move to the other node. Similarly, all of them will get aggregated. So in this part, I just aggregated one. So one comma one and one comma one similarly. Now the next step is these are the aggregated colors in the graph, a sense of utilizing connections into the measurable numbers. So up till now, what was happening is like we had been given some edges and some nodes. We were getting a sense of high degree node. This is a low degree node and so on. But we were not able to define any mathematical terms or attributes associated to a node. But now by having this thing as a number beside one, we have the label and we have the quantity, right? So this will help us to get back to the values that we have assigned right now in order to measure the nodes contribution to the network architecture. So now we have a sense of utilizing the connections into measurable numbers. Next injectively hash the aggregated colors. So in this, what we will do, we will first give the different labels that we have numbers. So 
since one is already utilized in the initial color i took 1 comma 1 as 2 1 comma 1 1 as 3 1 comma 1 1 1 as 4 1 comma 1 1 1 as 4 again and 1 comma 4 times 1 as 5 this is not addition It may feel like it's addition but it's not addition i have just tried to give them different labels to identify them separately right this and this will of course be the same because both of the nodes share the same properties so in a network if i see only this node then we will say that it's identical to this node as well right so that's why they have the same label and we will see later on in the process that this is not addition but just a way to injectively that is one to one function mapping of colors of the nodes to a label and this is the hash table that we have implemented in the graph now what we will do is rewrite this particular thing in a more organized way so then we see that we get four three four two two so now this forms the initial part of the labeling what do i mean by the initial part when i say 1 comma 1 this was the initial part so now from the next iteration onwards 1 will get replaced by 3 for this node by 4 for this node and so on right next now we have to apply this process on the other graph which is the graph 2 which was given in the question so i want you guys to go back in the video and see what was the other graph and try to find out the color refined labels of that graph and try it yourself so once you have done restart the video here and we'll move ahead so now you can check your answers as this is the color refined graph or the second graph given in the question so we need to remember that the same hash table has to be used for both the graphs in a single iteration right so for all the graphs under the consideration we will have the same hash table now can you make an important observation here remember that we are trying to find the similarity between graphs so if you are able to make that important observation then please write it down in the comment section below so the important observation here is more than two color refinement can be performed on any number of graphs simultaneously what does this mean is that when we are trying to compare graphs this particular algorithm allows us to take in multiple graphs simultaneously perform color refinement on them and then get to the results of whether they are similar or not this has been very efficient for handling large number of graphs together so this algorithm is inherently meant to scale as it can handle a large number of graphs simultaneously next we move to the iterative steps that we need to follow from now on to get to the results so these steps are the repetition of 1 2 and 3 as discussed above and they will be repeated until we get to a stable coloring scenario what does stable color mean is that the color sets don't or barely change in any iteration so the color refinement that we got for this particular graph after another iteration will hardly change what do i mean by that is it will be the case that either only one node changed or no node changed so very less or none of the nodes should change their color and that's when we say that stable color refinement has been achieved next two graphs are considered to be isomorphic if they have the same set of colors so graph one we found graph two we found but if they both now contain the set of colors identical to each other then we will say that they are isomorphic so performing the iteration finally what we will get is 4 comma 3 4 5 so in this case you see i have again aggregated the nodes here so if we go above this was the node label and i have aggregated 3 4 and 5 right so it was 3 4 and 5 similarly 3 4 comma 4 and so on that's how you calculate it for the first graph similarly for the second graph if we check the first node it was 3 as the label and 4 and 5 as the neighbors so 4 and 5 are the neighbors similarly the rest of it next what we have we will hash the aggregated colors 
so for hashing what we will do we will start from the point we had left in the previous hash table so if you go above we see that we have left at number 5 so we will start from number 6 right so in this case you see that we got 2 comma 4 in some part which is here so start in an ascending order 2 comma 4 6 2 comma 5 7 then we have 3 4 4 so the key to ordering this is like you can sum it up and see which is the lowest and then order it accordingly so 3 comma 4 comma 4 put it as 8 you can put it 9 also there is no issue but it should be different based on the color refinement achieved so far then 3 comma 4 5 9 4 comma 2 4 5 10 4 comma 3 4 5 11 remember that if it had been 4 comma 4 3 5 it's still equal to 4 comma 3 4 5 right so this order doesn't matter why because we are not concerned with the order they appear but whether they are connected or not so we will keep this in mind so moving ahead 4 comma 3 4 5 was 11 this is 12 and this is 13 remember that we are not taking the sum in any instance so you can see that 3 plus 4 plus 5 is not equal to 11 it's equal to 12 but i have put 11 this indicates that we are trying to label this separately for each kind of color refined node right so what we do we have the 2 comma 4 here so it will point to 6 it's 6 we have 2 comma 5 it points to 7 we have 2 comma 5 again here so it's 7 again now we have 3 comma 4 4 it points 8 and thus so on so now we can say that if we move ahead with this particular graphs and try to do this step again we will get the similar or the exact same graph again so we will stop here and see how the color refinement kernel gets formed so after this color refinement Weisfeller lehman kernel counts the number of nodes with a given color right so for this graph we have the colors now when we are denoting the colors start from the hash table one up to the last hash table you created so all the colors are noted down here and one if we see it got six nodes so it is six two has two nodes three has one node and so on so that's how we find it if you see why one is six because remember that in the first graph we had all the edges with this same color one that's why it is six so later on as and when we got any of the node we put it inside that particular color count so this is the color count vector for the first graph similarly i will ask you to find the color count vector for the other graph using this particular concept so you can check your answers below so this is the vector that you should get for this graph so what we will do now is find the waste filler kernel value by performing the inner product for the above two vectors so inner product is similar that we take the transpose and then get a dot product with these two so we get 49 when we do the dot product with these two vectors now the second part of the question which is whether we can find the similarity or not so for finding similarity what we can do is put k over the modulus of the first graph scalar multiplied with the second graph so it will obviously come within the range of 0 and 1 so when it tends to 1 we will say that the both the graphs are isomorphic and if it tends to 0 we will say that they are different so that's how you use Weisfeller lehman kernel for determining whether two graphs are identical or not and it is a very popular algorithm to determine whether they will exhibit similar properties when put in action or simulated using the machine learning model so that's been it if you still have any doubts then feel free to reach out in the comment section below if you like this video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos till then happy solving hey there before you go i've got some fantastic content lined up for you over here we've got some videos and playlists you might enjoy but first if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video